Hello, everybody. Good to see you uh, today. Hi, Belinda. How are you today? I'm doing well. I'm loving the spring energy coming through in this yeah. hemisphere. So lovely to see everyone here. Good to see familiar faces and some new ones. Hello, Denise, Sue, Trisha, Kim, Judy. Uh, appreciate you joining us uh, today. Um, for those that have been tracking our emails, you may have noticed a small change in how we're talking about gratitude circles. Um, this week, we talked about self-care, shared connection, and synchronicity. And it was a small, we just changed one word from social connection to shared connection. Um, but as Belinda and I have been invited and asked to share our gratitude circles with more and more organizations and leadership groups and networks, we realize it's not so much just about the, the idea of social, um, particularly nowadays with social media as, as kind of the familiarity uh, to that word, but it's really about finding common ground and that shared connection. And so for us, the self-care is so critical because it's hard to show up for others when if uh, you're not taking care of you. Um, but part of taking care of you is so that you can show up for others uh, and, and find that common ground, but in ways that doesn't require you fixing, saving, or advising uh, them. And then when we can take care of ourselves, show up uh, in our relationships in a healthier way, we really then open ourselves up to that synchronicity, that beautiful coincidence. And I think part of the reminder, uh, and this is what I love about um, Belinda's Gratitude Blooming Cards, is that it's rooted in nature. And re nature reminds us that the only way to grow is to grow together. Nothing grows in isolation. Everything kind of grows as part of something. And when we grow as part of something, we kind of know that blooming is possible. Right? And so this idea of renewal and growth and grounded in nature. Um, and so it's really been exciting to kind of see um, the gratitude circles just grow in lots of different ways. I think uh, last Friday, we launched our healing for the healers campaign at 10 hospitals. And if you were following us on Instagram, you saw it was just like a ton of posts of nurses dancing and um, really just that, that positive vibe and energy. Brian Vasquez, who's been our sort of producer extraordinary every week, has been on Clubhouse hosting um, a gratitude circle with he and his wife. And so whether it's just a circle of two connecting to whole healthcare systems or just even this weekly uh, space on Thursdays, it's just been exciting to see how self-care, shared connection and synchronicity just really opens up uh, life in a beautiful way. So um, if you're new, welcome and really um, appreciate you being here. Belinda is going to uh, invite us into a meditation. And the other exciting thing that's on the horizon, you guys are getting the sneak peek um, preview is that Belinda and Gratitude Blooming is gonna take over the G Thanks app uh, in April. And so the home screen that has our daily prompts and other uh, quotes of the day um, are gonna get bloomified. And so um, I can't wait to see it. We did an awesome collaboration in November where Gratitude Blooming took over our thank a friend feature and people got to sort of share these sort of gratitude thank you cards. Uh, from our app and we're like you know what this is going so well the gratitude circles are rocking let's like up the game and so uh, look out in April for a, a bloomified G thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I love that um, and before we get into our grounding exercise just to get present I'd love for us to um, just share where you're calling from and um, just you know one word that describes how you're feeling in this moment, um, just to know who's in the room. So feel free to take a moment to just share that. Where, where are you calling from and 
how are you feeling or what you what you need today kim you want to share that. Harley? Sure. i'm from twins ontario and this virus has been really hard on me because i can't see my mom you know so um i'm trying to get better but i had a bad day last monday and my mom had to sell me down so it's been hard that's why i take courses with gratitude with courses with the women in crisis and timid for gratitude but now right right now with covid i can't <laughs> Like I like to take more courses like this on Zoom because I'm doing my Bible study study on that too. Oh well, thank you for being here and sharing. Thank you. And as you share in the chat and uh, throughout today's session, really look at the chat as our public journal. Um, okay. You know, I think that is one <laughs> of the the beautiful practices uh, of gratitude is just the the noticing and the pausing to really feel the emotion. And sometimes when we take the time to write it, it gives us that moment to pause. Uh, and then there's something special that happens um, when we share together, right? That's the whole idea is that we grow together um, the more that we share. So we're, we have uh, Brian from Pasadena, Denise from LA, woo -woo, Linda from Oakland, um, Barbour, I'm not sure, feeling up and down in Muskoko, Ontario. Nice. I think you're our first Canadian in the house. So thank you. Trisha from Arlington, Texas. Always awesome. See you. Kim from Mountain View. Christina from <laughs> Connecticut. You're testing my state abbreviation knowledge. Good thing I have two daughters that are in elementary school. So keep me fresh. Kim uh, Timmins, uh, Ontario. And uh, I am calling in from the Big Island. And Catherine is joining from NYC. And Sue from Fairfield. Thank you and welcome. Yeah, welcome new friends and old friends. So we like to start with the tradition of just getting a present in the moment with some breathing and some grounding. Um, just to really arrive and open our hearts to what's possible in this space. So I encourage you all to just get a little bit more comfortable and just be aware of how your body feels today. Our bodies are such beautiful centers for intelligence and wisdom. So just take a moment to connect in with your body and just allow yourself to get a little bit more comfortable, whether it's just you know, more, more grounding in your tailbone with how you're sitting or shaking out your neck and shoulders where there's tension. So let's just take that moment for ourselves to just arrive in this space. And let's just take some deep breaths to just acknowledge our presence in this space, imagining beautiful golden light coming in from the center of the earth as we are in spring now. And breathing in, receiving that beautiful energy of a new time, a new day. And with your exhale, breathing out, purifying your body and releasing any stress or tension, or any feelings you want to let go of in this time. Breathing in, golden energy, energizing us and our bodies. And releasing. One more breath, breathing in. And release. Let's imagine a beautiful golden seed at the center of the earth 
that's coming in from the bottom of our feet and traveling all the way up to our hearts today. This is a gift from Mother Earth to each and every one of us this spring. And just imagine that golden seed resting delicately in your heart today. And as you breathe, focus your energy and attention in your heart for this time. Breathing in, feeling an opening in your heart, an expansion. Breathing out anything that you want to let go of in your heart today. And as you breathe, imagine this golden seed from Mother Earth, slowly starting to grow and expand into your heart. Slowly imagine the seed turning into a flower. What is that flower in your heart today? Breathing in, imagining those petals expanding out in your heart. Releasing, to detoxify, the soil, the energy around you. Just imagining that beautiful flower expanding and growing in your heart. And just really imagining the beauty of that flower, just noticing the colors of those petals, how it might feel as it's blooming. And the expansion of the stem as it grows. Maybe even noticing what smell it might have. Just allow the, all of the senses to enjoy this beautiful blooming of your heart. Breathing in, expanding into the beauty of your heart. Releasing, letting anything go that doesn't need to belong here right now. And just absorb the beauty that's within you and your heart. And let that flower be a reminder of hope in your life. Is there an area of your life or within you that needs a little bit more hope today? Imagine this flower bringing more hope to that part of you. As you breathe, expanding and opening yourself up to receiving that hope.
And just taking one more round of breath to send our gratitude to ourselves today for being here. And gratitude for the earth, for all the beauty and life that's created from the earth. And for this next round of breath, let's imagining, let's imagine sending this flower out into the world in this beautiful circle, releasing that hope to our community, to the world, just imagining all of our flowers floating up in the sky and just spreading hope everywhere that everyone that needs it today, receiving that feeling of hope. And imagining those petals of our flowers floating down from the sky and just falling back onto the earth. Beautiful colors, fragrance of those petals coming down back into the earth. And just know that anytime you need to feel hope, you can connect back to this flower that lives in your heart. Take one more deep breath as you slowly transition from this inner space to our circle. And just remember that in this space, you are your best teacher and guide. And so there's really no need to fix, save, or advise anyone else in this space, this place is just for you to receive and share your story. And in this circle, we're going to also allow silence to be a powerful participant with us. And as you transition, also just um, be mindful of how you want to participate today. If it's through observation and presence, or through the journal and the chat, or to practice sharing your voice. All these different ways are invited in the space for you. So yeah, take a time to now transition to the circle. Just noticing the people here and receiving the wisdom and synchronicity of the gratitude blooming cards that we will experience together. Thank you, Belinda. Uh, it was beautiful. Um, I appreciated Denise's uh, feather your nest comment in the chat as she was like, get settled. And I love the idea of a little flock that's getting feathering our nests uh, to get ready. Um, and so now we uh, get to pull um, a gratitude blooming card. I feel like we should um, create a drum roll for this. <laughs> Only just because I feel like it just, it deserves sort of anticipation um, just because it's so fun to see what the cards reveal. If you would like to um, pull a card today. All right, Kim, I like it out the gate. So there's um, seven rows, six columns. Go ahead and access your mic and just tell us. I was just thinking about this first row because we usually scroll for a while. And it's, I was like, oh, I just think one of these. So what's the first card? <laughs> just the first one on the left. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. All right. Let's go. Know. Ah. <laughs> oh. Orchid, mystery. 
Can you embrace the unknown and be grateful for the mysteries in life? Mm -hmm. Something come up for you, Kim, on this one? Hmm. Not yet. <laughs> I'm not good at raising or orchids. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I look at I love orchids but it seems like when I get them as gifts I, I don't know quite how to keep them going <laughs> but I'll think about this one mystery thank you anybody else uh and when you look at the card it could be the image something about the orchid itself, the word mystery or the prompt. So whatever speaks to you, um, you know, the, the practices around the noticing. Well, I'll, I'll share on this one. Um, I don't know if I've, I've shared this uh, on a gratitude circle yet, but I've been working on writing a fable and it's about this beaver. And um, I, I ended up writing or started writing um, in the summer after like a seven day fast and meditation and all these sort of words just really started kind of flowing. And I was halfway through writing a book uh, about gratitude and sort of my journey into it. And then I just sort of realized like it wanted to be told in a different way. And, and this beaver came to me and she's, uh, this story sort of emerged over the course of a week. And I've been sort of editing off and on since then. And, um, but in the last week or so, it's, um, I've been in it a little bit more, a friend of mine who's a filmmaker uh, read it uh, and just gave me some great feedback. And it's just, I, I, I raise it because some of the characters I thought were just sort of very, were just characters. Um, but then they've sort of been revealing to me different parts of myself and different people that I know in different ways. And so in some ways, I don't know, there's something about, maybe it isn't a mystery. Right? It's just sort of, we're sort of slow to realization that some of these things are always there and always present. And the only mystery is like, what is it that's going to be the window that opens that allows us to see what is already there? Um, and so for me, like this writing process um, was a little bit of a mystery but the window that it's open for me has just been like, wow, okay, these are some of the forces and people and personalities, the light and shadow uh, that are in me and in some of the people in my life. And this beaver kind of, uh, kind of let me see them. And that was kind of beautiful. We have a bunch in the chat. Um, Kim is sharing, it makes her think about curiosity. Um, Christina, unknown is difficult to trust. Catherine, Faith, Jelona, and if I'm mispronouncing your name, please let me know. Uh, it reminds me of, of the time we are currently in right now, collectively of being in the unknown, as far as not knowing really, knowing what is next. Reminding ourselves to sit with this curiosity and thinking of different ways creatively, we can help set the stage for this next stage of our lives and going with the flow. Mm. I have something. Can you hear me? I'm driving, but it's very we hear relaxing. You, Angela. It's, it's oh, Angela. I love that you're joining I, us. <laughs> like, I, I'm a, like, I just wanted to hear and get this really peaceful vibe because I'm driving into downtown LA on the 110 freeway and it's, it's, not terrible but it's you know it's full um and as i'm i'm looking at the i i love orchids i have orchids all around me at home and um the color purple on this uh, particular drawing i'm reading this book called the secret lives of color and i just read about 
the color purple, which is often associated with like nobility and mystery. Um, and I was fascinated because, you know, there's no matter how many things we think we've encountered in our life, the mystery never ends. And it's like when we deal with the known and the unknown and the, the whole idea of change, right? Like most people really resist change because it's unknown, it's kind of scary. And the purple represents a kind of quality that has to do with um, the story around it is, is around the fact that it's a very difficult color to make and a lot of sacrifice has to go in to making the color purple. It doesn't exactly reside in blue or in red. It's some combination and there are many grades, gradient gradations of purple, what we would call purple. And so to be able to embrace this particular color with understanding that so much was, was given to create this experience of this color um, was something I just wanted to share. And I, I love also the color purple. So that's my thought. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. And I appreciate you demonstrating gratitude on the go. I mean, this is how easy gratitude is. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I love gratitude. Anything else? So I, I kind of thought of what the card makes me think of now. <laughs> um, so I was thinking about that. It kind of um, like mystery is kind of it could be upsetting, but it also is what makes life like exciting or interesting or, you know, like that unknown is, it just really depend. You can look at it negatively or positively, right? And I think when I'm calm and feeling centered, it's, it's so much easier to embrace it and almost, and just look forward to it actually you know, really look forward to something that I don't know and a mystery that's going to unfold or, yeah. So that was kind of fun to kind of come to that place. <laughs> Thank you. We also want to share on this card. Mm. Asma shares, and again, forgive me if I'm not getting your name correct. Purple is associated with spirituality, the sacred higher self passion, third eye fulfillment and vitality. Purple helps align oneself with the whole of the universe. New Jersey, I like it. Garden State. <laughs> Thank you. Are we saying your name correctly, Asma? Just to make sure. Yes, yes. No one else ever did. <laughs> <laughs> People usually call me Asma. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's the first you. time it's pronounced with the S sound. So thank you guys very much. <laughs> Beautiful name. <laughs> thank you for thank joining you. us. Thank you so much. Kim? Go ahead and access your mic. Yeah, we got two Kims today. So exciting. Kim B. We'll go with Kim B. Um, an order makes me peaceful and stuff like that. I love or the smell of it. Makes me a serenity. And I love the color purple because I'm calm with purple. I love lilacs and I love roses. That's my favorite flowers. And it's, uh, I love flowers all the time in the springtime when I see them bloom, you know? So it's peaceful. That's what I think about that card. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. 
By the way, I like your hat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to convince Belinda that we should come out with our own line. <laughs> Working on it. To be continued. <laughs> Trisha says, every day is a mystery through life. Hmm. So I'm going to go again just because um, Angela's note about the color really struck a chord for me. And I just, I was in a um, gratitude circle earlier today and I was struck by the idea that we all receive energy from the sun and then we all transform it in different ways. And so all plants, animals, living beings, things, we all receive the exact same sun and yet we all can transform it into these different colors and smells and textures. And, um, and so there's this beautiful like equality and yet infinite diversity um, that color now, like when I, and Angela, you just brought that back for me of just even looking at this flower and thinking about color and, and even this orchid that is in the card, it's representing purple and lots of, there. it's got stripes and splotches and density. And, and so, um, yeah, that's also what's speaking to me with this card. I think Kim B is ready to pick the next card. Shall we, right. shall we have a Kim squared uh, today? The yeah, I'm, I'm ready. Okay. Um, go on the left, the, the, the side, left side on the fifth card. That, that one, the first one or the fifth the, one on that row? The, the fifth one on that row. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right, here we go. Let's see. Huh. <laughs> oh, the chamomile. Oh, my. That's my favorite, too. <laughs> oh, patience. Some of the most important lessons in life require space and time to grow. What is your relationship with time? How can time be your teacher? Does anything come up for you, Kim B, on this one that you'd like to share? Well, I have chamomile cam cam tea all the time with my sister and it makes me in peace. And with my relationship with my sister, I, I've been, I, we've been getting uh, closer together. <laughs> She's been teaching me a lot of different things about t different teas, you know. I'm very grateful for that. That's what I think about chamomile. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. you. You're welcome. Denise? These two are going hand in hand for me because I have felt very restless today. And, um, and it was frustrating at first. And then I took a minute to, to look at the restlessness and embrace it um, and, and realize it's like a calm, not before a storm, but before a next. And we haven't had any calm for the last year and some, and <laughs> there's now a moment of opportunity to have a little calm. And it's like, oh, okay. And then once I looked at it and sat with it for just a little bit, there was all kinds of, of positive opportunity or affiliation or association that came with it for me. So it was really um, nice to stop and look and listen to it for a minute and then embrace the patience I'm going to need <laughs> to see how it evolves. So these two are very, um, synergistic for me today. Mm. 
I'll share. I feel like every time I get to see this card, I'm like, oh man, the universe is talking to me again. <laughs> like, like you're, you know, it's, it's such a, my relationship with time is so challenging. Like I lose track of time very easily. I tend to run, I'm, I tend to like always run late because I'm like, feel like there is no real sense of time in the world. It just can be kind of free flowing. But then when it comes to the things that I'm really passionate about in my work, there's so much mystery um, in terms of how things are going to unfold. And I find myself sometimes responding to the uncertainty with a lot of impatience, um, you know, like just wanting the clarity or the resolution to like happen sooner. Um, and it is kind of like drinking camp, like, you know, camp meal tea before bed. Like, how can you be, how can I be more calm and relaxed about my relationship with time without forcing or pushing time to be anything different than what it is? And, and yeah, maybe for me, this, le the lesson here is like, approach the mystery with patience and and let let it bloom at its own pace. You know, I'm look, I'm seeing the the plants coming out of the ground around me, and it's like they're just doing it at their own pace. They're not trying to like rush the flower to come out. Um, so I think that's the lesson right now for spring. It's just like let it just flow at its own pace. It's all it's all gonna be good. <laughs> This one is um, also, uh, I've shared, I think before that six years ago, I went on a silent retreat and at the end of six days, I got to talk to this monk and uh, all I could tell him was in that silence, all I felt was impatient and he just laughed at me um, and said that the root word for impatience in Latin is patis, which means to suffer. And I was like, gee, thanks. Um, great <laughs> feedback. Um, but time has been a great teacher for me because I, I've learned subsequently that part of why I was impatient is because I was afraid. Um, I was letting fear rule my sense of time. And, and the fear was not being in control. And so it was really my desire to sort of try to control outcomes, to not sort of appreciate the mystery of things and let things unfold, but try to predetermine how I wanted everything to go. Um, and as I've been able to a, acknowledge that fear let go of some of the need for control, then time has not been something to suffer. Uh, and instead, it's something maybe time is actually something I can savor. Um, and so I just, like you savor a chamomile tea. Um, you don't rush it. <laughs> the, 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 the joy of chamomile isn't getting to the bottom of you know, the cup. Um, but really just actually appreciating that moment of pause. Um, and I'm just, I'm tasting like a little bit of honey because I just, I always add honey to my chamomile and not too much, just like a little bit of sweetness and just maybe that's it. A little bit of sweetness savored can go a long way. Omar, oh, so I... Absolutely needed to hear this. I have been suffering with my with impatience my entire life, and I have I never saw the connection between impatience and fear. <laughs> it's 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 magical that that I got to hear your words today. Thank you. Is there anything else you'd like to share about the card or the prompt? No, I'm, I'm just in awe of how you have explained impatience. Thank you. 
you. Patience, you know, when speaking about a cup of tea, patience as a virtue and um, mystery in life of the unknown. And <clears throat> to be able to take the time, like life, we let things marinate, like a cup of tea steeps, pour the tea, we step through life one step at a time into the unknown. So I was thinking about just sort of the internal pressure that makes me impatient or the external pressure sometimes that makes me impatient, like expectations maybe that I have of myself or that other people have of me that makes, you know, and how um, sometimes I'll get sort of that fear or impatience, but it's coming from without outside of me. I, I don't know how to describe it, but, and, and then I, it's, it, I even think about it. Like, I'm just thinking about right now with one of my children, um, you know, high schooler, I, I'm trying to be patient and give him the time that he needs to like mature. Right. And, and be ready for life. And, graduate from high school and like, and I want to be patient and give him space, but it's like the world is pushing him and pushing us and making us fit into this timeline. And so I have moments where I push back and go, you know what? My kid needs space and time and I need to build in patience. Like I need to be more patient with this process, but then I feel like I'm not doing what I should do. And I get impatient with myself or I get impatient with him. And I'm like, no, we have to be on the world's schedule. Like you got to accomplish this by this. You've got to, you know, it's, I don't know. I don't, it, this card brings up a lot of, like, I want to be patient with myself, with, with him, with life. But I feel this societal pressure to like meet certain timelines and deadlines and I don't know, expectations. And maybe that's the fear piece. I think that's why it came up was when Omar mentioned this fear. <laughs> and so maybe my impatience always arises when I, I start letting the external world kind of make me feel fearful. And then I flow to impatience instead of kind of, I just have these really nice moments too, where I can just feel patient and sort of open and accepting. And like every flower blooms at its own time. Like, I wish there was just a little bit more space for that. And I'm a teacher in school, <laughs> just a, and, and in life for everybody to just bloom at their own time. I think the more we are grounded, the less external factors will uh, have an effect on us. I feel like everyone's making such great points and I'm so moved and inspired by this conversation. Um, but I also wanna explore with um, how we heal and what we feel when we think of um, how we're thinking a certain way or how we're feeling a certain way. And instead of judging our feelings or feeling like you shouldn't be thinking like that, how can we also hold a space of gratitude for having the awareness? Um, I think that sometimes not being impatient, um, having that impatientness is, is a human emotion it's it's in our fight or flight it's how we figure things out it's how we um take our next steps um and just finally finding the balance in that duality because it's just a normal human emotion and we can observe all the things that we we feel and everything that comes up and all our fears and everything that makes us feel good and warm inside and just observe and and choose from a grounded 
um, and more like loving space but also just not condemning yourself for feeling that way either. You're normal, you're human. And um, we all are experiencing the same things. And I think that having these circles and having these meetings and one-on-ones um, that being vulnerable in this space, it, um, it makes us realize that we all are experiencing similar things just in different ways and a different lens. But yeah, that's all I wanted to share. Thanks, Jelana. So nice to see you here. Please. I just have to read the little message on my tea <laughs> because it says, Many paths lead to the same destination. It doesn't matter how you get there. So to Jelana and um, other points made today, I thought that was just poetic. <laughs> mm. I love that synchronicity of literally drinking tea and a beautiful message around mystery. <laughs> Would anybody else like to share on this card or uh, pick a new one? Well, I'll pick a card if nobody else wants to. Um, I mean, I am delighted to pick cards. Um, I'm feeling uh, the fourth row and um, third card. <laughs> I don't, I don't you, guys, you guys shuffle this deck, Melinda. Um, the Right. Trisha's card one again. Of those consistent <laughs> cards we pull. I don't know what it is, but peony, healing. Taking the time to heal yourself is an expression of gratitude for this one wild and precious life you've been given. How can you support your own healing? Well, I'll just say that. Um, with mystery and patience and healing. Um, when I looked at fear without judging it, um, I was able to kind of understand what was driving me to want to control things. And, you know, I think a lot of my life um, and particularly as Asian American and as a mixed Asian American person with a name Omar, um, I was who traveled a lot. I was always like the new kid, and, um, and I sometimes felt very invisible. And you know, in high school, I remember you know when you fill out those standardized tests and they say you know check your ethnicity, and I often checked other. And I feel like there's something very invisibilizing, if that's a word, about other. Right? You're not even in a category. Um, but then it also uh, gave me a lot of freedom to not fit in. Um, and I think part of wanting to be in control was to make a mark. Um, and that was really ego. Um, and so letting go of needing to make a mark and just being comfortable with who I am uh, was healing. And then that changed uh, and has changed um, my relationship to time. Uh,
I love that. I feel like healing for me is something that I'm, I'm always trying to figure out and, um, things come up that I feel like I've healed from and it's in a new stage and version of my life. And, and I had to realize that it's not something that like a finish line that I'm going to get to when I'm finished healing, I'm going to pass over to a different life. Um, healing is going to be consistent throughout this entire lifespan. And that's just something that I have to continue to remind myself because sometimes um, it can be a little upsetting when you feel like you haven't healed from um, past things or just when you think about all the healing you still have left to do. Uh, but it doesn't have to be in that way. I think when you see healing as a, cons a consistent thing, life is a healing and feeling process, then it comes a little more easy for you not necessarily easy, but um, open maybe. That's just my thoughts on the card with healing and time. May I share? Can you hear me? This is, anyway, I, will, I guess I'll share. Um, it is, the peony seems to follow me. And um, taking time to heal myself and express my gratitude for this group and the time that we've spent together as uh, through this last year and all the healing that I've been doing and healing work and helping to heal others. And... Um, Help he, healing to, to help support in healing and um, getting ready for more tests. It's always more fun. The unknown and the, the mystery behind this growth of the uh, the count the chamomile of the being. I lost my words. Um, patience in healing, being patient and healing with my body. Thank you. Does anybody else have something they want to share before we end to wind down this circle today? I'm just, I'm just really struck by um, the three themes together. I mean, every week is so different based on which cards show up and patience, mystery, and healing, there's like a certain level of timelessness of all of them. Like it's, it's just like this ongoing cycle of life, spiral of life. And, you know, all three kind of dance in that spiral. And um, I think what I'm going to take away from it for my own healing and is just how to just fully embrace that this is why I'm here and this is what I'm here to learn is to and to fully um, embrace time and mystery and and healing as like a you know there's no destination there's no end point it's just the process the, the the journey of life so just feeling a lot of gratitude for these three cards together You know, that reminds me of when you had a, the flower growing and you, we pictured the flower and um, and my flower um, was a plumeria because I was thinking of Hawaii. And then 
it just kept rotating. Like, so it's interesting that you're saying all of these things are just this process, right? That you're patient with, there's a mystery and you're healing. And it's like, so I was picturing this plumeria and then it, it just, it, it kind of just kept rotating. And it really goes with this idea of kind of, kind of this process that we're constantly kind of going through and kind of balancing out and moving through. Um, I, I like that. And it helps you be patient. I, I, it's kind of helping me see it as they all feed each other or something. I don't, like they kind of synchronize up, right? Yeah. Kind of funny. And pink is one of my favorite colors. So as we wind down this gratitude circle, I just invite you to get comfortable for a moment as we take three closing breaths. Fluff your nest. Did I get that right? <laughs> um, feather your nest. Feather your nest. I was like, fluff sounds, doesn't sound quite right, but um, feather your nest here. So in this first breath, I just invite you to notice and acknowledge the different feelings and emotions that came up for you in the last hour. In this next breath, I invite you to notice how you're feeling in this specific moment. And in this last breath, breath, I invite you to take one thing from today's circle that you want to bring with you for the rest of this week. And to know that you can compost your feelings and emotions to create soil for new growth. Thank you so much for joining us this week. We know that this circle is an invitation to a new kind of bravery. If you get my email every week, you see that I write that because I know that asking folks to be vulnerable in community is no small ask, but I also know that it's an accelerator for healing that when we do this work together and we know that we're not alone, we can bloom brighter, more beautiful and faster. Not that given we got the patience card is it's about speed. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, um, it helps us learn um, maybe a little bit faster. Uh, and even if it, some of the lessons take a little bit of time to know that we have other people on the journey with us is, is comforting as well. Um, as, as we um, go out, just also, I had mentioned um, Belinda and Gratitude Blooming is gonna be Bloomifying the app uh, come April, which I'm super excited about. The other thing that Belinda and I are, are working on is a, a deeper dive workshop um, April 17th, um, we're going to be hosting one. Uh, and then also, I think on April 21st, we're going to be hosting one for a group called Yet to Be Named Network, which focuses on uh, racial healing and climate justice. Um, and so it's a national group. And I just love their name, Yet to Be Named Network. They could have asked me to do anything. And I'd be like, that name is so cool. Of course, I'll, I'll help out. Um, I think everything should be just yet to be named. 
um, it's, uh, that's how we let things evolve and grow is, you know, we don't predetermine it at all. Thank you again, everybody, for joining us. We appreciate you being here. Thank you, Belinda, for being the co-host extraordinaire, and Brian <laughs> Vasquez, our producer on the on the is it the Rings of Steel? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we hope to see you again next Thursday. So thank you all Cheers. for being here.